young athletic team was really crashing hard. You, you went with Wood down the stretch, a second straight home game. What was the decision there, and how did you think that paid off in the defensive glass, especially? I mean, just whenever he's in there with A, Brian, um, especially A specifically, like they're just two huge presence on the defensive glass, and Christian gets some of the toughest defensive rebounds uh, I've ever seen anyone get. And so he and A being combined for, I think, what was it, 25 defensive rebounds, we needed every one of them. And before I get into us, man, just, just a huge shout out to Jamal Mosley and the job he and his staff are doing with that young group over there. I mean, they, they force you to play and compete each and every possession on both sides of the ball. They never stop coming. You can see the growth in that team, you know, albeit they're very young, but they, they, they make you play. And they put a lot of pressure on you, offensively and defensively. So kudos to those guys with a lot of lessons to learn. You know, tough game, tough situation, tough team to face on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, especially that first night being an overtime game. Um, highly, highly contested, highly emotional game <clears throat> on Sunday. Uh, but happy we pulled it out. Had a lot of great moments, different segments from different guys that, you know, helped carry us across the finish line. Kevin, was it a better time for D'Angelo to have a game like this for you guys? Absolutely. Low man, he, he just, you know, he just, his calm, his calm presence offensively, he's constantly thinking how he can get an advantage. Um, constantly concerned about, you know, making sure Bron, AD get, get, you know, their touches and, and, and they're put in the best possible position to succeed and it's comfortable playing off the ball as well. And so uh, his ability to catch and shoot, especially when Bron down the stretch is, is, is quarterback in our offense and getting us what we need to get. Um, Lowest grade out there. He, the, the knockoff screens, the AD coming up with Brian, that Brian AD pick and roll, paid dividends <clears> tonight. And, um, you know, having Torian out there, another strong defender with size. And again, Christian Wood, his ability to be active on the glass and block shots as well, uh, proved big. But D'Lo, you know, he stepped up big time for us tonight, big time. Darvin, um, what can you guys, I mean, I think second chance points tonight were 20 to 4. Orlando. They're a bigger team, but you know this has been a trend a little bit um, in terms of teams and tagging the glass here for the last year plus. What's it going to take for this team to, to become a better defensive rebounding team? And, and knowing that the struggles, is there an opportunity for a player maybe like Christian to play even more, considering that it has been a strength for him? It could be. I mean, it's just it's just a matter of continuing to work at it. That's it. I mean, continuing to work at it. Um, continue to highlight, you know, these moments, that particular segment of our game in terms of finishing possessions, um, trying to close the team out and not give them multiple looks. Um, it's just something you just got to continue to work at. There's no magic pill that's going to make it go away. I mean, you're going to have nights where you dominate the defensive glass. And you're going to have nights where you're there, you're in position, but the ball is slippery. It bounces off your hands, I'm, I'm, you know. Weird bounces off the rim, uh, long rebounds that you don't seem to be able to track down. Like it's a lot of different variables, but as long as we make our team aware of it, like the two things I said, the, the beginning of our defense and the end of our defense, the transition defense and the defensive rebounding is something that we want to prioritize. Everything in the middle, uh, we can figure out. Our, our pick and roll coverages, our shifts and activity off the ball, off ball defense, we'll figure that out. But Again, just continuing to preach it and make them know how important it is. And they see it. You know, we saw it in Sacramento. We did a great job for the entire game and had a couple of misfortunate bounces that they were able to get a hold of and capitalize off of. So they're aware of it. And it's just something, you know, you can't get bored with talking about. D'Angelo had the biggest offensive night for your team. It, it, it seemed to my eye that not only him, but Austin and Gabe were all the decisive in terms of looking for their shots. Um, did you notice any shift there? And I recognize that defense remains your priority for the entire group, but uh, can that help your offense where versus trying to deal each other out, just like, I know what I can do, I'm gonna go get my shot. Yeah, you know, we talk about it all the time. Simple pass, simple play, um, you know, connecting on time, on target. 
and those guys just being aggressive and assertive. You're open shoot it. Don't overthink it. Um, because the time you turn down a shot, you thought you saw something else that quickly, that opportunity is no longer available. And so uh, those guys just keeping it simple. The more we have enough talent where we don't have to get tricky, we just have to, you know, do the blocking and tackling as I call it. Just, you know, playing with pace, getting good hits with our screens and coming off playing downhill, forcing the defense to collapse and the defense will tell you where the ball should go. And once you receive the ball, if you're open, shoot it. You know, if you're at the rim, sometimes shoot it. If you're not covered up, you can make a layup, score the layup. And so you just can't overthink it. You can't overthink it. Darvin, uh, since the Denver second half, AD's averaging about 29 points, 16 rebounds, three blocks. What type of response have you seen from him since then? And, and just him kind of carrying the offense at times and being aggressive on the offensive glass and what? <laughs> I mean, I think it's, it's uh, just him being himself, you know. Um, people reference that Denver game, man, like Jokic don't exist. And, and him having to deal with this guy on both sides of the ball, that's, that's, that's a load. And so um, just him just settling in, you know, the game legs are coming. That's what the early part of the season is for. And I constantly tell him to be aggressive, be assertive. Uh, he's the captain of our defense. He's back there holding down the back line, talking, active, uh, changing shots, blocking shots, and coming up with rebounds, um, setting screens, rolling hard, not forcing anything, just taking his opportunities. Guys are looking for him. So he's, he's starting to get into a really, really nice rhythm, an efficient rhythm at that. So I just expect him to continue to grow, continue to get in, in, in not saying he's out of shape, but just continued again, it's a difference between being in great shape and being in great game shape. And all of our guys are, are, are making, their way, making their way into that direction of being in great game shape. And that's what these early games are about, just blowing it all out, being, a, being competitive across the board. And he's right at the top of that list. Sticking with AD, it seemed like guys were either getting, getting him more involved or he was more involved in different actions, whether it's inverted pick and rolls, you know, quick steals. Was that something that was emphasized to be into the game uh, just generally or because of the matchup that he had tonight? I mean, it just <coughs> one of those things coming into the season, we, you know, we, we wanted to be more organized. And, you know, it's good to play random sometimes off a miss. But when, when there's a dead ball or there's a made basket against us, uh, trying to be as organized as possible and keep him involved, keep him engaged, keep him aggressive. And so, yeah, on one hand, it's, it's deliberate for sure. And then on the other hand, again, guys are just programmed to look for him. Uh, they, we know, you know, the things he frees up when he's aggressive and, you know, he's the center of our offense. And so uh, the more and more we can get him going, the more and more we can feature him, it makes life, life easier for everyone. How much do you can you use that um, AD's involvement as a gauge as how, how how organized you guys are offensively? Just because you know big men typically maybe need a little bit more of that. How how can you use that as a gauge? You know, I guess the organization offensively. I mean, just if if you're not turning the ball over, you're getting good looks. Um, <coughs> the analytics they have is QSQ and QSI numbers, and. Uh, you just put a mask on, man. Right. <laughs> it's been like, it's been over a week. I'm in the middle of this. Before right the now. game, man, I try not to say nothing, man. It's, it's been over a week. Okay, man, just. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good now. Worry about you. I appreciate it. I'm good. I want right. to see you Wednesday, okay? I just want to see you on Wednesday. Right. Right. We're good. So, it's just, you know, when you take care of the ball and your assist numbers are up, your free throw line numbers are up, you got high field goal percentage. You know, AD is a huge part of that. And, uh, other guys when they're playing downhill, Brian, AR, Lowe, all of our Gabe, everybody, um, Seawood, those are you usually the gauges and, and, and the signs that you're uh, doing pretty well offensively. Mark, hey, hey Darvin, I understand it's early, but um, small sample size, but given Kershaw's journey through his career, why do you think this environment's been good? I mean, our organization, the, the history behind it speaks for itself. Um, I know uh, how locked in to trying to get better everyone in that building is on a daily basis. Um, 
I think our coaching staff we came in here last year and wanted to establish and set a tone daily of trying to help our players individually and collectively maximize their God-given talents. And also, you know, when you got LeBron James on your team and Anthony Davis on your team and all the wars they've gone through and, and the things they've conquered in this league, you, you find out pretty quickly that, you know, we have our fair share of fun. Don't, don't, don't get that wrong or don't, you know, misread me on that point. But people know when they step in our environment that we're about business and we're about winning. And so uh, that, that trickles down to the entire group. And everybody that's coming in here, they're asking questions. They don't want to be that guy that that uh, not locked in, that's, that's, that's not paying attention, that's not putting that work in. So when the game time does come and we need that 150-50 ball or we need somebody to be confident to step up and make a shot or knock someone off from, and stopping them from getting an offensive rebound, they understand everything, all the work we put in on a daily basis with our bodies, with our breakdowns, with our scrimmages, and all of that, is geared toward us to have the ultimate success. And so I think it's infectious. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.